Hi guys, welcome. And who that? I'm Joe. And today I want to examine the offensive line for the New Orleans Saints. And we'll talk about potentially what Clint Kubiak would like, what he may be thinking, and how serious is the situation for the Saints at offensive line. It's just something I thought about doing. I had time to record today. Don't really have a lot of stuff ready, produced to put up here. And I thought, well, I kind of just want to talk about the Saints. I kind of just want to talk about the offensive line. I've been talking about the draft for months. And right now, everybody seems to be on board that offensive line is the, is the position we need to address the most. And I've done plenty of mock drafts where I've taken offensive linemen at different times. I have my favorites in the draft. I've also done a few mocks where I, I wanted to wait and see how long it would take before I addressed offensive line. And yeah, I, I realized that right now, with two weeks to go before the draft, offensive line seems like the position to address. I've been saying it for months. Everybody's saying it now. But, of course, I have to look at the other side of things. That's the way I'm built. I have to see both sides of everything. I try to see all sides of all of it. And I started thinking about Clint Kubiak. I started thinking about the moves that the Saints have made and the moves we haven't made. And I was thinking really hard about offensive line. We all want the Saints to address offensive line in the draft probably multiple times. And I think that we have a big need in the interior as well as at tackle. We have needed guard as well. So we're all in agreement on this. So naturally I have to look at the other side of it and say, okay, well, what happens if we don't address offensive tackle at all early, at least early in the draft? Well, that's going to indicate to me if the Saints do that, that they're comfortable with what they have. And this is something that I don't think a lot of people are are expecting. <laughs> Not a lot of people are really talking about it. We don't expect that, do we? That Clint Kubiak came in here, he saw the New Orleans Saints offensive line and said, you know what, I can work with this. Now, he had to have liked something about the offense, right? I mean, Clint Kubiak took the job. I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't want to set himself up for failure. I think there are plenty of players on the Saints that got Clint Kubiak excited. Derek Carr is an average, above-average quarterback, the way he was playing at the end of the year. It can, you can be excited about that quarterback play. I mean, Derek Carr frustrated everybody throughout the season, but... The bottom line is, in the last five to six games, when he had no Michael Thomas, and it seemed like his connection with Chris Olave and Rashid Shaheed was a little questionable, and he was going out there in those last five, six games with a wide receiving core that included Lynn Bowden Jr. and Kirk, Keith Kirkwood, you know, uh, Jawan Johnson that hadn't been performing all year. Carr and this offense managed to produce at their highest level at the end of the year. It, it seemed like the less Carr had to work with, the better he played. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to roll out that exact offense. The, op <laughs> the offense we played, it, that the offense we had in the last game of the year against Atlanta. Okay, we can, we can, we can probably all agree that was the best game for the Saints. It wasn't the 34 nothing shutout of the Patriots. But, I mean, 48 to 17, was that the final score? I mean, give me that offense every day. Well, let's look at that offense. You had Cameron Irving starting at right tackle. You had no Kamara. So you had Kendra Miller, who, who, who was barely healthy all year, at running back. Your offensive line was in shambles. I mean, it was it was Andres Pete starting at left tackle, James Hurst starting at left guard, Cesar Ruiz not 
playing very well at all all year. And like I said, a backup right tackle in Cam Irvin. And your wide receivers are Chris Olave and Rashid Shaheed. But then after that, Lynn Bowden Jr., A.T. Perry, Keith Kirkwood. And that offense with Derek Carr put up 48 points. And Atlanta's defense was okay for most of the year. I mean, they weren't the worst defense we played. They weren't the best, but you see what I'm saying? I think Derek Carr can get you excited when you say, well, if you can produce with all of that, maybe Michael Thomas was the problem when he was healthy. Maybe Carr felt forced to feed Thomas all the time instead of do what he does best, which is distribute the football and just get the ball out of your hands and Get it to whoever's out there. You know, dumping the ball off to Alvin Kamara at the line of scrimmage every other play is not the way I want the quarterback to operate, and that frustrates me the most about Carr. Okay, so back, so I'm getting off on a tear. I, I just want to talk about the Saints. I'm not sure which way that any of this is going. All of my videos are live. Like, I start recording. I don't usually have a script. I might have a paper that's got a few names written on it. So I don't forget somebody. And then after that, I'm just talking. The beauty of my channel, I'm a fan. You come into my home and we're going to talk about the Saints. So I really want to focus on offensive line in this video. But back to my point of Derek Carr and Clint Kubiak. So what is Clint Kubiak excited about for this team? Taysom Hill. Yeah, that's a piece. Clint Kubiak coming from San Francisco and Shanahan. Looking at Taysom Hill going, man, that... That could be my next George Kittle. That could be my next uh, use check. So, then you got Alvin Kamara. Yeah, that could, that could definitely be my McCaffrey. He could definitely play that role. Rashid Shaheed. Well, what do you know? Uh, uh, Debo Samuel. There you go. Got that. Yeah, the only thing the Saints are really missing is a big wide receiver that can run block. Got A.T. Perry. Get him better. A lot of things to be excited about. So what about the offensive line? The only moves we've made so far on the offensive line is we've signed Ole Udo. U o Ole Udo. That's what I'm going to say. That's how I'm going to say it. Ole Udo. Now, Ole Udo had experience with Clint Kubiak in the past. And he comes over from the Vikings and... When Clint Kubiak was the uh, offensive coordinator for a brief stint with the Vikings, he had Ole Udo play right guard. That was when he got his most starts in the league. He started at right guard that, that whole year for Kubiak. So Kubiak brings Ole Udo to the Saints. This is a good move. Udo can play tackle or guard, and he can play both sides of the line. He knows the system. And he's the perfect guy to bring in to fill in the gap. So I think that was the, uh, that's like the, uh, the safety measure here. Okay, so if Trevor Penning doesn't work out or if James Hurst doesn't work out or if Cesar Ruiz doesn't work out or if Ryan Ramchek doesn't work out, we've got Ole Udo who we can plug and play at any place, and we know he can do what is required in this Kubiak system. So he comes in, and at worst, he's going to teach the other players from a player level how to do this stuff. The coaches are going to coach it. You got a player that's going to show you how to do it. But Udo could be a bigger piece than we think. I, I feel like he's a he's a safety measure. Okay, we've got a guy. James Hurst can't make it in this system because he's not mobile enough at left guard. You just plug in Ole Udo at left guard. We're good to go. Well, you got Nick Saldaveri there, fourth round pick from last year. Couldn't crack the starting lineup last year, but his movement skills look like he's the kind of guy we want at guard. So Saldaveri might be your new starting left guard. I mean, if he can perform at a level comparable to James Hurst last year, even though this is going to be a new system, what I'm saying is if he can, if Saldaberry can start at left guard and be an average to above average starter, then you got a piece already on the team. That leaves James Hurst available to 
swing around and, and be a plug and play guy. So if Saldaveri wins that left guard spot, Ole Udo, where do you go next? Well, Cesar Ruiz at right guard. You know, not a lot of people are talking about this. Ruiz signs his big contract after he had a decent season. And then his first year under the new contract last year, he just looks awful. He starts every game. He, he plays every game. And there are some plays where he looks like a first rounder. But his overall grade after the whole season, uh, he graded out worse than anybody else that was that starting <laughs> final five there toward the end of the season. I mean, he just graded out pretty bad. Maybe Udo's there to take Ruiz's place. Maybe we trade Ruiz during the draft. I was flirting with that notion last year. <laughs> I was like, hey, let's, let's trade Cesar Ruiz. I was really set on the Saints grabbing a guard last year. I had my eye on either Steve Avila or uh, – the big boy from Florida, o o o Osiris Torrance. Osiris Torrance ended up going undrafted, which blows me away because I had a solid second round grade on him. And of course, Steve Avila got drafted in the second round and ended up starting for the Rams and played in the playoffs and all that. So, so yeah, I had a I had Cesar Ruiz penned as a trade option last year. It could be a trade option this year. Or he could be that first-round guy that's going to keep the job and perform well in this new Kubiak system, and we don't have to worry about right guard. I'm not worried about center. I think Eric McCoy is going to stay healthy, and he's going to be great in this scheme. He's a very good center. If you have to move him the guard, even. <laughs> I mean, if we draft a center and move McCoy to left guard, I'm not going to fret. So, yeah, we're talking about the offensive line here. What, what I want to do is let's pull up the offense. So we can look at the offensive line. I'm talking about these guys. So let's pull up the list and look at it real quick. I know I've got all these things uh, organized in probably a wonky way for you, but you can understand what I've got going on here. And we're going to look at that starting five. Trevor Penning, James Hurst, Eric McCoy, Cesar Ruiz, Ryan Ramchek. Our big issue is Trevor Penning's not good enough. We need to replace him. We need a left tackle pronto. Okay. Trevor Penning could have stayed as the starting left tackle last year. We could have worked through the kinks with that guy. I thought that even though he was performing poorly, he was getting better and better every game. Now, Carr would have probably gotten killed if we had kept Penning out there. Maybe. Well, he practically did before we pulled Penning out. But there is the frame of thought that is to say Penning should have stayed out there and learned. That's the only way you're going to get better is to actually do it, see your mistakes, and work through it. So maybe by the end of the year, <laughs> we're starting our backup quarterback, but Penning's getting a little bit better. So then there's also the train of thought that, well, like the Saints did, no, it's too much for Penning to handle. We're just going to throw him on the bench, and no matter what happens, we're going to keep him on the bench, and he's just going to he's just gonna have to find his confidence somewhere else. I don't know how. How do you build the confidence of a first-round draft pick who's being told you're never getting out there? So I don't know. Maybe there was some sort of friction between our old O-line coach, Marone, and pinning, I don't know. Maybe Clint Kubiak sees a lot in pinning and thinks pinning is going to be great. We're going to work through whatever struggles we have. Pinning's going to actually be a starter this year, and he's going to play, and he's going to do it, and it doesn't matter. I mean, if Kubiak has that intention, if that's his vision, and, and really it should be since Trevor Penning's a first round pick. I mean, the guy has the physical tools, so you just hope he can put it all together. And you got a new O line coach, you have a new offensive coordinator. Maybe this is how Kubiak thinks. Maybe left tackle isn't even an option for the Saints in the draft because they're confident. We have Trevor Penning. If it doesn't work out, we still have James Hurst. And if that doesn't work out, that's okay. We brought over Ole Udo. He can do it. Maybe that is Kubiak's intention. Look, 
Penning's going to work this out. He's going to figure it out. He's going to be our starter. If not, we have our starter in Udo. We don't need to spend a draft pick on a left tackle. Now, that might be the approach that Kubiak has. And wouldn't that blow everybody away? I mean, I personally think it would be best case scenario if you put Penning out there and you make him get better and he actually gets better. I don't know. I don't know. It's a risk. It's a risk. And last year, the Saints could have done it. And as an organization, they decided they weren't doing that. So it leaves everyone to assume Penning's not good enough. He won't ever be good enough. And left tackles the way we have to go. <laughs> you also have Mark Evans who can play left tackle and left guard. And Mark Evans was a high priority undrafted free agent last year. And yeah, there may be some upside to Evans as well. Maybe we see a turn from Evans. And you also, we're going to look at right tackle now with Ryan Ramchek and with Landon Young. And of course, Landon Young can play left tackle too. So you got Penning, you got Udo, and Udo can play right tackle. You've got Mark Evans. It's possible we can throw him at right tackle. I've seen Evans play in left tackle and left guard. Uh, so James Hurst can play left tackle, left guard, right tackle, right guard. Now, James Hurst isn't athletic enough to fit into the system, I don't think. I think that he signed to the veteran minimum, and he's going to be a guy that we end up letting go when it's all said and done if we acquire enough pieces. But if Ryan Remchek can stay healthy enough to actually play and he can manage the pain and he can uh, and he can he can go out there and perform like he did last year, he was okay. He didn't perform at a pro bowl level and I think he missed 5 6 games when it was all said and done. But, I mean, if the guy can go out there and at least start 13, 14 games for you, then, you know, you're only going to be struggling at right tackle for a couple of games. I think it's too big of a risk. Personally, I think Ryan Ramchek's going to retire. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to play again. And if he does play, it's just so much of a stress factor. The guy's not practicing. He is practicing. You don't know until the day of whether he's going to play or not. It's just stressful. I liked Cameron Irving as the backup right tackle last year, better than Landon Young. So, like I say, you got Ole Udo. I think Kubiak's like, look, okay, I've got my man. If Penning's no good, we'll put Ulo in there. Udo. If Ryan Ramchek retires, we'll put Udo in there. If James Hurst ain't athletic enough, we'll put Udo in there. I think that's what Udo's here for. And Landon Young's just okay. I don't think that I would want to start three or four games this year with Landon Young as my starter, especially a left tackle. But a right tackle, you know, I just, I'm not confident. I don't like the idea of having to, to give help to somebody because they're not good enough on the line. So when it's all said and done, yeah, the Saints need to have a tackle. A, they need to draft a tackle for sure. You got too many questions here. But I'm just saying, you see a situation in the draft where the Saints are avoiding offensive line, then you're going to know that Kubiak has a plan. Are these guys good enough to get it done? Nick Saldaveri, that's the guy we're hoping is going to take a jump this year and be our starting left guard. You don't have to worry about the interior. You'll have Saldaveri, McCoy, and Ruiz. Your backup Tommy Kramer right there at right guard can play tackle, too. And Kobe Gossett, we just acquired him right before the season ended. I see him listed as a right guard. Not sure what kind of flexibility Gossett has. So there are your guys right there. So the way I'm looking at it is best case scenario. Trevor Penning turns a corner. He becomes your starting left tackle. He, he, he works through the growing pains. He fits good into the new system. He gets along great with the new coaches. And Trevor Penning's our starting left tackle, no problem. If he's not, and Ole Udo has to start instead, at least you got a guy that's got starting experience. You got a guy that's familiar with the system. And I think that if you're 
familiar with the system and you can perform within the system at multiple positions, then it's kind of like having James Hurst, except for this system. I'm hoping Oli Udo, Odu, you, uh, Oli Udo, I'm hoping he can be way better than we think. You know, now he played right guard when he played for Kubiak as a starter before, but People are talking about him as a potential starting left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right guard. I mean, so maybe Kubiak's like, you know, we don't really need to address. We don't have to address offensive tackle with the first pick. We got two first rounders starting right now. Trevor Penning, Ryan Ramchek. But yeah, personally, I think offensive tackle should be addressed in the first two picks. It should definitely be addressed at some point in this draft. I think we need to get better than Landon Young as a backup. And if you got Udo as your backup and Ramchek can't go and Udo becomes your starting right tackle, yeah, I, I think you can get better than that. So I'm really hoping we address at least tackle once in the draft. But is it the stressful situation that we all think it is? I can't get into the head of Clint Kubiak. But if he's in love with Trevor Penning and he decides he wants to force the issue with Penning, then uh, yeah, we could we could go into the draft with left tackle off of our minds completely. Wouldn't that be weird? At some point, you have you you feel like you have to get a tackle at some point. But if Trevor Penning works out, and then Ryan Ramchek stays healthy. Your first round, second round tackle is going to be, uh, you know, competing with pinning or a uh, primary backup or whatever. It's interesting. It's an interesting thought. I wanted to put this out there. I wanted to put the starting lineup up as is right now and really focus on the offensive line and think about it for a minute. I mean, Ole Udo's the guy. He's going to be the plug and play guy wherever the failings may come. And your biggest issue is left tackle and left left tackle and left guard and right tackle. Trevor Penning's a first round draft pick, and I think he's got a lot of ability. And if he works out in this offense and he's given the opportunity to work through the growing pains, we may not have a great successful season this year, but I mean I think Penning would have become a much better player had he been thrown in the fire last year and stayed there. We just don't know. That's a big X factor there. Trevor Penning and Ryan Ramchek's health. Personally, when I think of the tackle situation, if I had to choose between, okay, what do you think is more likely? This is a tough one, Saints fans. What do you think is more likely? Trevor Penning turns into a better player and he can start. Or Ryan Ramchek can remain healthy enough to play for you and start. What's what's more likely to happen? Trevor Penning becomes a starter for us and is okay. Or Ryan Ramchek stays healthy enough to continue playing football. I think I think there's a bigger chance Ramchek retires. than there is that uh, Penning can't play. Okay, so I think there's a bigger chance that Penning can play than, than Ryan Ramchek can stay healthy and play. So what, I, what I'm saying is our biggest need, and we've been saying left tackle this whole time because of Trevor Penning, I think our biggest need is right tackle <laughs> with with. Ryan Ramchak's health. I mean, I just don't I just don't see how likely it is that a guy can have this knee condition and and manage and continue to play. I just I think the guy's gonna I think this millionaire is gonna worry about walking the rest of his life instead of continuing to play the game that he loves that his body won't let him play anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I think right tackle might be the bigger issue here.
Now, Ole Udo can play right tackle, and he can start for you, and if he can play as good as Cameron Irving did at the end of the year last year, then we don't have as big of an issue at tackle if Trevor Penning works out. It's a, it's an interesting thought, though. You want to draft a pure left tackle because you're worried about Penning not being good? Yeah, I want to do that. You want to draft a right tackle because you're worried Ryan Ramchek's not going to play again? Yeah, I want to do that, too. I want to do all of it. <laughs> Most of my mock drafts, I draft two tackles. I draft two offensive tackles. At some point, I grab a second one. Whether it's Dominique Puny, who can play tackle or guard, or Kingsley Suamataia, I always grab a tackle early, and then I, I grab a second piece because I'm worried about pinning and I'm worried about Ramchek. Best case scenario, pinning starts and plays, and he's good. Ramchek can stay healthy enough to give you 14, 15, 17 games this season, and you got your two starting tackles, and you don't have a tackle issue at all. You've got Landon Young, who's in his contract year, that can play both sides. You've got Udo, who just showed up, that can play both sides. You've got Mark Evans, high-priority guy, who's only been in the league a year now, so he's learning. you got Tommy Kramer, who can play tackle and guard, and you also have James Hurst, who can play tackle and guard. So, yeah, you go into the season with this crew right here, and, and you know, I'm, I'm terrified, but if Benning plays like a first-rounder and Ryan Ramchek's healthy, the only issue you really have is that left guard, and Nick Saldaveri is, is, could be the guy. He could be the guy. And if he ain't the guy, you still got Kramer. You still got Evans. You still got Hurst. So if you're optimistic about the tackle position, <laughs> like I'm trying to present myself here, yeah, living in dreamland. But your biggest problem could be left guard when it's all said and done. So that's my uh, experiment. I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I just wanted to pull up the offense, look at it, talk about it. What can Kubiak be excited about for this offense? I think he's got a lot of pieces he likes. He may be in love with Jake Hayner. And I think Derek Carr's comparable to a middle middle grade player in this league. I mean, the, the type of quarterback that can be successful in a Shanahan Kubiak system, I think Carr can pull it off. And even if he just performs at an average, slightly above average, everybody says he's middle of the pack quarterback. He was among the best at the end of the year last year. So yeah, Kubiak could be excited about Carr. He's probably really excited about Olave and Rashid. I would be excited about Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara for sure. And Jawan Johnson is another guy that could thrive in this system if put in the right position and if he stays healthy. So on offense, I would like to see another addition at running back. Of course, I would like to see another addition at wide receiver. I would love to get a complete tight end. But uh, offensive line is, is, is the way we're going to focus on it. So, so that's the way I would go. But I wanted to do this video just to say, hey, look, if we don't get a tackle in the first round or the second round, the Saints may be telling you that they already have pieces they're comfortable with. And that makes me very uncomfortable until I see it for sure. But if you think Trevor Penning can be your starter, and you think Nick Saldaveri is going to make it at left guard, and you think Ryan Ramchek is going to stay healthy, then you have your offensive line. So that's that's my devil's advocate, wearing the other shoe, seeing everything from all sides point of view. When it's all said and done, I would still like the Saints to address tackle twice in this draft. Offensive line, at least twice in this draft. And uh, cover our bases, but you know, there could be there could be there could be some goodness here. There could be a, a a future left tackle, first round left tackle, starting left tackle, and pinning. You could have Ole Odu Odu in case uh, Ryan Ranchek can't go. You could have your backup already ready. You know, and Saldaveri could be good, and and 
Maybe the offensive line can be all right. Yeah, I'm not taking that chance. I'm still drafting tackles. <laughs> I'm still drafting guards. But that was my uh, little thought process. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This uh, brain fart of sorts. I'm Joe. Subscribe to Rosenville 10 because I'm going to be doing more videos about the Saints. And before the draft, I'm definitely going to have a final breakdown of every position and who I like in every round and what the Saints can do. I'm debating on pull it, putting up a video where I just show mock draft results, not actually going through the whole thing, but just showing you a handful of mocks that I've done, what I'm thinking. So subscribe and join the family and leave your comments. And until the next one, I'll talk to you later. Who that?